fifth of brother in the street. And I said, you know, they ain't scared. Amen. They ain't scared. I didn't see one mask. Not one. And I said to myself, if the world don't have no fear, surely those of us. Right. They worship our Lord and see Savior oh. Jesus Christ. All the baby to live without fear. Amen. Amen. Knowing that God is our light, what? And our salvation. What she says, whom shall, whom shall I fear? Amen. Um, we can Mark chapter 2, if we can today. Mark chapter 2. I met with the mayor this week and I thought her mask was kind of cute. And so on my way out, they gave me two. I said, I'm gonna try this out. It's a, it kind of looked cute, it looked like a welder's mask. Amen. So I wanted to see if I could preach with it on. Amen. Probably be getting these for the choir. Help y'all out a little bit better. We just want to be safe as much as we can um, be obedient to CDC guidelines. Amen. Mark chapter 2, you'll find the word of God says, and again, he entered into Capernaum after some days, and it was noise that he was in the house. And straightway many were gathered together in so much that there was no room to receive them. No, not, a, not as much at about, at about the door. And he preached the word unto them. And they come unto him bringing one sick of the palsy, which was born of four. When they could not come nigh unto him for the press. They uncovered the roof where he was. And when they had broken it up, they let down the bed wherein the sick of palsy lay. Now here's the key to the text. When Jesus saw their faith, faith that Jesus can see. When he saw their faith, he said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. Watch this. Verse 11. I say unto thee, arise, take up thy bed, and go thy way into thine own house. Look what happened. And immediately he arose, took up the bed, and went forth before them all, insomuch that they were all looked amazed and glorified God saying, we never saw it on this fashion. You may be seeing it. I want to talk about ingredients for a miracle. Ingredients for a miracle. Ingredients for a miracle. Believe me or not today, church, many people believe that God was only dealing in the supernatural. In the Old Testament and in the times of Jesus, closing with the book of Acts. Now, many people, many seminaries who teach that the days of miracles are over. That God no longer invade the human, the natural world and give you a supernatural miracle. For those who think this way, they never look for God to do anything to relieve people of bad situations. People that don't believe in miracles won't pray. Because they don't believe God would do it. Here's how they live. They live their lives accepting whatever comes to them and never ask God for change. 
When somebody gets sick, they just say, well, you know, that happens. People get sick in this life. Somebody get in trouble. Well, you know, people get in trouble sometimes. That's just their season. They're going through a season of trouble. But they never will pray and ask God to alter or change. My brothers and sisters, God, watch this. We'll allow things to happen so that we will look to him and no one else for him. Could, could it be that God allowed a terrible thing to happen in your life just to make you pray so he could bring you out? Then so you could give him the glory. Let me say it again. Yes, Maybe he allowed a bad thing to happen so you could pray. Come on, yeah. So he could bring you out. Uh -huh. And then you could brag on him and he could get the glory. Yeah. See, God, if he had never allowed someone to get hungry, you wouldn't know he's bread in a starving oh, life. If he never allowed anyone to get thirsty, you would not say he'll give you water in dry places. He had never allowed anybody to get sick. You would not know that we serve a God that's able to heal sickness and disease. If he had never allowed the storm in Mark chapter 4 to come, you would never know that God speaks weather language. Let me say it again. God speaks weather language. He told the wind and the waves, be still. And the Bible said that was a great come. God could be allowing you to go through some terrible situation just to get you to your knees so he can show you how powerful he is. So then you can brag on him and tell everybody, can't nobody do me like Jesus. Nobody. Could, could it be that God is allowing this? I suggest that you never lose your faith in the power and presence of God. Don't ever lose your faith. Whatever you do, I don't care what's going on in your life, how long it's been bad, you got to keep praying for better days. You got to keep believing God. The Bible says in Romans 3 about Abraham in Genesis that Abraham had hope against hope. Lord, have mercy. He had hope against hope. So Abraham believed God so much that despite his old age, despite the fact that Sarah's womb had closed up, Abraham believed God that God was going to give him a son. Uh -huh. In other words, he stood on the promises of God. Yeah. And I come to tell you, when it comes to miracles, divine healing, you better get you a promise. You better get you something that you can stand on. I don't care if it's just simply that what Jesus says, when you pray, believe that you have what you ask for. Yes, and you shall have them. You, you better walk in faith. You better speak faith. You better believe that, hey, it may not look like it's going to happen. It might not happen for somebody else. But I just believe if I hold on to my faith, God can make this happen. So many of us don't operate in the realm of faith. Here's, here's the key. And without faith, you cannot please God. See, God ain't got, 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 God ain't moved by your tears. He's moved by your faith. He's not moved by your frustrations. He's moved by your faith. And faith says to God, I know what you can do. And I know you so well, I'll sit here and wait till you come. Right. Oh, not only that, God, I know what you can do so well, I praise you in advance. Yeah. You, you don't have to give me my miracle. I'm going to shout today because I know it's on the way. That's the kind of faith that God can see. I wonder today, do you have faith that God can see? I want to give you at least two scriptures. To fuel your faith. Right. Hebrews 13 and 8 says Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. The Bible said Jesus didn't change. So that means if he's the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. What he did on yesterday, 
He can do it today. And when he do today, guess what? He can do it on tomorrow. That's good to know because that means the generation that come after me will not have less power than I have. They'll have the same power and access that I have. Their children that will come after them will not have less power than them, but they have the same power available for their generation that we have available for our generation. The question is then, Reverend, if God is the same today as he was yesterday, why is it that we don't see God move like we used to see him move? I think that's a good question. I think we ought to ask, why is it that God don't move like he used to? The text says that he saw something that made him move. He saw their faith. Let me say it again. He saw their faith. You want to know what's wrong with the church today? We got a lot of people that go to church that don't have no faith. Y'all ain't helping me preach it. Here's why. Faith don't come by watching television. I wish y'all helped me preach it here. If it did, we'd be, we'd have some churches full of faith. Faith don't come by playing video games. But faith coming by hearing. And hearing by what? The word of God. The church, see Satan have gotten church people away from the word of God. We, we, we got to the place where we don't even uh, trust the word. We critique the word. We, we, we got the audacity to say my opinion, your opinion on mine. When God speaks, that's the end of the conversation. But because there's no faith present, God can't move or desire. He, matter of fact, he can, but his will is that you will show him some faith. And he'll show you a miracle. Yes, sir, Doc. But many of us go through life, we don't pray. Well, people going through bad situations, we ought to be praying for them. We tell them it's going to get better. Right. It'll get better. Well, don't worry about it. You know, God knows. No, 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 no. That ain't what Jesus did. When people were in trouble, Jesus prayed for them. Yes, sir, Doc. Matter of fact, he prayed so much that when people got in trouble and couldn't get to him, people who knew him would bring them to him. See, when you got faith, People who are going through, you'll bring them to church. Uh -huh. you, you'll get them to worship because you'll say, look, I, I just know if the same God who laid his hand on me, if, if they just hang around this church long enough, something going to happen one Sunday that's going to change their lives. I, that's what faith, faith says. I'm not giving up on you because God didn't give up on me. And if God brought me out of darkness into the marvelous life, he can do the same thing for you. You're giving up on faith. Wow. You've allowed these smart philosophers to tell us God don't give miracles anymore. Mm. I got one more scripture I think I ought to give you to fuel your faith. Romans 2 and 11 says, for there is no respect of person with God. Mm. Right. I mean that what God done for the woman with the issue of blood, he'll do for you. He don't have a respect of person. Right, right. Here's what Jesus said. Whosoever we. Yes, sir. I wish I had a church in there. Whosoever will, let him come. Regardless of your color, your creed, your economic background, Jesus said, just come. Just come on. If you got the faith, God can give you the miracle. Now, the word miracle comes from the Greek word simeon. Here's what it means. A sign. But what is distinguished about the sign, this sign distinguishes one from another. You read John chapter 2 when Jesus turned the water into wine, the Bible says this was the beginning of his miracles. The beginning of his simeon, the beginning of his signs that distinguished him from anybody else. Oh, my brothers and sisters, if that's a miracle, I'm getting them all the time. 
Because God doing stuff for me that distinguishes him from anybody else. If he's ever done anything for you that man can't do for you, baby, you got a miracle. And you ought to trust him more today as a result of what he's done for you than you trusted him on yesterday. It is, a miracle is not explicable by scientific or natural laws. In other words, if you can explain it, it ain't no miracle. Right. Let's, let's put it through the test. Can you explain the water being turned to wine? Uh, scientists got a problem with it. Physics would say, what, where, what, what was he walking on when he was walking on the water? Because the weight of a man should not allow him to walk on water. Uh, 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 uh. Those who work in the kitchen department would ask, where did the other fish come from? Where did the other bread come from? It won't sit through my natural mind what it did. See, what I'm going to tell you is some of us, that's our problem. We keep thinking ourselves out of our miracle. You're trying to understand God when God is saying, you're not going to understand me, but trust me. Being the one how can God do it when the doctor says a bad situation? How can God heal in this situation when nobody has come back from this? God is saying to you, stop trying to analyze, but trust me. Trust me enough to put your little faith. All God needs is a little faith. You don't have to have a lot, just a little faith. I don't know who I'm trying to coach today to trust God for a miracle, but maybe I'm speaking to somebody here. That God may have put you in a spot right now saying to you, I'm just trying to get you. To use your faith. Yeah, sure. And when you show me some faith, I'm going to show you some miracles. Yeah, sure. I was in the league football and the cheerleaders, I remember this real good cheerleader, uh, a little chant they used to do, show me what you can do. Yeah. They would call the little cheerleader, man, show me what you can do, Tanya, show me what you can do. Show me what you can do, Tanya. Show me what you can do. My name is Tanya. Yeah, she'll do her little flip. She'll do her little split. Amen. Then Tanya go stand back in line. Show me what you can do, Tina. Show me what you can do. Then Tina do her little somersaults and all that. Listen, God is saying, you show me what you can do. If you give me some faith, I'll show you what I can do. I'll give you a miracle. He's calling us. To trust him and never doubt him. Let me hurry on today. I ought to just leave you with the ingredients of a miracle. You already got the ingredients of pound cake and potato pie. Right, right. You got the ingredients of how to do your dressing. I'll just leave you with some ingredients on how to get your milk. Number one. If there's going to be a miracle, that must be the attendance of the Almighty. The Bible says, it's in your Bible. And again, he entered into Capernaum. After some days, it was noise that he was in the house. That must be the attendance of Jesus if you're going to get a miracle. He's got to be present. It cannot be like he was in the book of Revelations in that seventh church by the name of Laodicea. He wasn't in the church but he was standing at the door knocking. So if you're going to get a miracle you at least got to get him in the house. I might as well tell you how to get Jesus to show up at the house. He said if you praise me I'll show up. I inhabit the praises of my people. He must be attendant if you're going to have a miracle. Look at the movements of his attendance. The text says, look, and again. He returned 
to the same place in Capernaum again. Now Capernaum name, it means the village of comfort. It was a place that was supposed to be of comfort. But so sad about uh, Capernaum is out of all the miracles they saw, many of them did not trust the Lord. So much so, the Bible says in Mark 11 and 23, he upbraids them and says, Woe unto you, Capernaum. If the works had been done in Sodom that were done in you, it would still be scattered. He said, I've done all these mighty works among you. And you don't trust me the more. Oh, my brothers and sisters, how many of us are just like the village of Compton? God been so good to us, but yet we don't trust him like we ought to. Oh, look at his movements. Watch this. His movement is revealed because the text says, and noise went out. Somebody verbalized that Jesus was present. Somebody went through the town saying, that man who was here the other day, who cast that demon out of the man in the synagogue, he's here again. That man who touched Peter's mother-in-law is present again because the text says he's in a house which suggests he's probably in the same house he was in in chapter 1, which was Peter's house. Y'all going to talk to me. He's at the house. It's revealed. But then secondly, his movement is received because the text says, and straightway many were gathered together in so much that there was no room to receive them. No, not so much as about the door. Yeah. He's received because, first of all, the text says he's received instantly because, look at your Bible, is that it says, and straightway, instantly, when they heard Jesus was there, folks started moving. Let me say it again. Instantly, when they heard that Jesus was there, people started moving. I'm going ahead of you, but listen here. Many of us kill our churches long before Sunday. We, we kill our church service long before. You want to know why people won't come and visit the church? Because the wrong noise is getting out. I ain't got no help. The text says the noise got out that Jesus was in the house. Yeah. Yeah. And because noise went out, people came in. Uh -huh. Instantly when they heard Jesus was present. Do you know if every church member would stop gossiping about the church and start gospeling? Come on, yeah. Right, right, right. Let me say it again. Stop gossiping about the church and start gospeling. Yeah. You get to work on Monday and say, girl, you should have been at my church. Oh, the choir sang. Jesus was in the house. Girl, I'm so ready to be back at church. I got my clothes laid out already. I got my clothes. You know how it was when we were going to the club. We lay our club, we lay our club clothes out on Monday for Friday. And if everything went right, we'd go to Super Bad and get us another little outfit so we'd be ready for the club. Y'all ain't talking to me. I know I'm not the only one. That's how eager we ought to be to get to church. We ought to be so eager that our clothes are all right out. Yes, sir. Can't wait to get there. So many people are gossiping and not gospeling. Right. And so people don't want to come to church. Well, they have to deal with what they're already dealing with. Oh, I wish the members would start telling folk, girl, Jesus at our house. Yes, sir. I know he I can feel it. We are seeing his work at the church. Right. He's changing lives. He's fixing marriages. Yeah. He's helping men get off a of drug and break addiction. Yes, sir, doc. Yes, sir. He's in the house. He's in the house. When they said instantly people came in, he said straightway, but watch this. Insomuch that there was no room to receive them. Not only did they come instantly, but they came immensely. You couldn't even get in. It was like the club last night. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were standing on the outside trying to get in. 
The text said the house was packed. Matter of fact, it, the fire department would have came. So y'all got to clear some of this space out. There's too many people in this room. It was packed out. Watch that. Because Jesus was in the house. Yes, sir. And some churches wonder why nobody going to them. I see you, boy. All dead, the same dead. Yeah. You look dead when you get there. <laughs> you wonder why ain't nobody. Our church is, you know, it used to be full of folk, but it's just dying on. Come on, man. It's death, it's death in there. <laughs> boy. I hate, I hate to do good math on you, but death plus death. <laughs> oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. If you don't know the answer, you all better guess that. Death, on, yeah. death plus death can get life. Y'all gonna help me preach that. You, you gotta have some life if you're gonna attract somebody. Yeah. People gotta see Jesus in the midst of something. Yes, sir. And I've been to places where everything in there was dead. The prayer was dead. Satan was dead. It, it, it'll make a sleeping spirit come over. Oh, no. Oh, no. But I've been to some places soon as I got out of my car, I was trying to help me. <laughs> yes, sir, no. I could feel it in my car. Ooh, it's gonna be some church in the night. We are gonna have a time in the night. It was life in the building. The text says they said that Jesus was present and people came a missing. They didn't need no marketing program. Mm. They said Jesus here. You know, I believe that's all the church, the world needs now. Right. Is Jesus to be in the house? Yeah. Yeah. Because when Jesus takes over flesh, sits down. Yeah. And the spirit yeah. is in control. Yeah. Are y'all gonna help me get out of here? Yeah. Yeah. He, 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 he's in attendance. Well, well, you need him in the house. But secondly, if you're gonna get a miracle, you need the attendance of the afflicted. Uh -huh. Where? Not only the attendance of the Almighty, yeah. but you need the attendance of the afflicted. Uh -huh. What do you mean afflicted? The person who's going through. Yeah. Uh -huh. Person who needs a touch from God. Yes, sir. See, see, God didn't come for the well. No. He came for the sick. Uh -huh. If you want him to move, you can't get all well for and tell God heal somebody, they will. But if you want God to heal somebody, you ought to bring some sick folk. Yeah, right. Y'all gonna talk to me? Right. You need the attendance of the afflicted. Here it is in verse number three. The Bible says, "And they come unto him, bringing one sick of the palsy, which was born of four." Now, now Jesus is preaching. To the crowd. It's packed. Before, before they, whoever they are, don't have their name, but it's four of them. They, they brought this afflicted man to the church service. They, they brought him. He has palsy. He's afflicted. They brought him in first chapter, verse 33. There's a they that bring a group of people. In chapter 6, verse 56, there's a they who go through the city and get the folk and lay up in the street and tell Jesus, all I want you to do is walk down the street. And the Bible says, as many as touched his heel. They, they don't have a name in the text. But every church needs some they. Every church needs some day that will go get folk and bring the afflicted to Jesus. Are y'all helping me in here? I need to tell you that many of the people in the Bible who got to Jesus would have never gotten to him if it had not been for them. In chapter 7 of the same book, Mark, there's a deaf and dumb man. Do you know how he got to Jesus? Or they brought him. Chapter 8, there's a blind man who came to Jesus, who Jesus had to touch two times because the first time he said, I see men, but they look like trees. Do you know who brought him? It was a day. Are y'all going to help me? In chapter 9, there's a boy who's a lunatic boy who kept falling in water and in fire. You do know how he got to Jesus. 
it wasn't a date, it was a dad that says, I brought it. But somebody brought it. In, in chapter 10, my brothers and sisters, there's another man who comes, a blind man. Guess what? And they, it's always a they bringing somebody to Jesus. I don't ask you today, when the last time you brought somebody? When the last time you saw somebody so mixed up, you said you need to go to church with me. Isn't it strange how we leave the afflicted at home? The people who really need God, we leave them behind. And then they're the ones who need to be present that God can give a miracle to. Oh, my brother and sister, let me get out of here. This man who's afflicted, he's afflicted because there's been an invasion into his body. He's sick. His body has been invaded. Man is not supposed to be sick. Sickness is not of God. Amen. Healing is of God. Amen. Help is of God. Amen. He's been invaded. He's sick with sacrament. He's been injured because he's got palsy. Palsy is a disease that comes from the brain unable to get his message to the muscles. I wish I had time. Which, which means there's some inner confusion. And you do know who is the author of confusion. He's good at messing up messages. He messed up a message in the garden. He told Eve that you're not going to die. If you eat of the fruit, he messed the message up. He said, God just don't want you to be smart as he is. He knows that when you eat, you're going to be just as smart as he is. The devil messed the message up. This disease paused it. There's a problem with the message. There's an inability of the muscles to receive what the brain is communicating. And so therefore, pause was defined as the relaxing of the nerve. Meaning that when you see someone with palsy, they have no ability to move that particular area. Sometimes it is caused uh, by a, a hit to the spinal cord or a stroke can leave one with palsy. Right. We don't know what happened in our text today. But we know this man is at home. He had no ability to get younger to the church. But a day showed up. Uh -huh. Well, I wish I had some yeah. What if they had not shown up? This man would have been at home, left out. Right. Yeah. Text showing us how important our work is. So many people are just saying, I ain't got nothing to do. You got a plenty to do. Yeah, right. Problem is, most of us want to do what we're unqualified to do. And that that we're qualified to do, we don't want to do. But but all of us can be a witness. I don't care what how tall you are, how old you are, we all can be a witness for Jesus. You don't have to know the whole Bible to be a witness. You can just tell them about your own experience. If God has ever done something for you, you got something to witness about. You got something to talk about. If he's ever made a way for you, if he ever brought you out of a situation, you, you got something you can talk about. Well, let me hurry on. The Almighty's brother. Yeah. Well. The afflicted is present. Uh -huh. Notice, he's brought by four. Yeah. Four is a significant number. Uh -huh. He got four seasons. Four wins. Four points to a compass. In relation to love, four means stability. When you read Revelation chapter four, there are four beasts. One as a lion. One as a calf. One as a man. And one as an eagle. Four is the number that's related to creation. Uh -huh. In creation, you have the four, earth, fire, water. 
earth, fire, water. And it's one more. But it's related to creation. And we. It's the number four. It represents love. I come to tell you, that had to be love. To go to a man's house. And everybody get their corner. Watch this. And bring him to church. Notice, every man had to carry their own corn. Yes, Three things, I'm going home now. For them to get them to Jesus, it requires some things. We have the almighty present. We have the afflicted present. But lastly, we need the attendance of the all believing. Somebody got to believe God can do it. The crowd was just onlookers. They, they didn't possess faith. Do they would have brought somebody? But there was four who represents the remedy. Who said we're not going to the meeting empty hand. We know God can fix it. And I can probably hear this man of pause is saying, I've been this way a long time. Well, do you really think the man named Jesus? can do something about my condition. I can hear the four say, just the other day, my brother, he cast a beam without the man in the synagogue. And on the same day, there was a man who had leprosy and he healed him of his leprosy. And in that same house that we're taking you to, there was a woman, Peter's, his disciple, mother-in-law, right. had fever. She was burning up. Mm. Yeah. He laid her hand, laid his hands on her, and her fever left. Right. I hear him talking to her. Saying, if you just trust us to get you to Jesus, he has no respect to person. Right. Uh -huh. What he's done for others, we believe. He'll do the same thing for you. Can't you see them with their corn marching to the house? Three things this attendance of all believers had. Number one, they cared. You know, we've come to a place in life where nobody care about nothing but themselves. We need more people who care about the afflicted. And we need to care more than Thanksgiving and Christmas. Yes, people ought to be fed for Thanksgiving. Yes, they ought to be fed for Christmas. But they got to eat all year long. Help me somebody. We ought to be sharing, clothing, and feeding all year long. Well, have a witness in it. They cared. But number two, watch this. They cooperated. One thing you can check today is we got five over here. We got four over there. Right, right. We got ten down the street. Right. Everybody trying to pay water, light bill, and gas bill. Yeah. And pay a preacher at the same time. Right. Yeah. But nobody knows how to watch this cooperate because they don't know how to collaborate. Right. Right. Y'all ain't talking to me. One reason why we can't get together is because we won't talk. Come on down. You got to first collaborate before you can cooperate. All right. These four people had the unity to come together. Mm -hmm. Watch this. Nobody was arguing about, I'm going to be in the front. Yeah. Nobody, they just took their corner. They said the issue is too serious for us to be around here fussing and bickering about what position we're going to be in. Right. They said, we got to get this man to Jesus. Yeah. We don't have time to let petty things get in the way. Or who going to lead and who going to follow. Yeah. Let's just get the job done. Right. I wish I had some help in here. Not only did they care and cooperate, but then they were committed. Right. How you know they were committed? Because if they had gotten to the door and saw a crowd and been like some of us, 
We would have turned around and said, well, we'll go back next time. Right. But the Bible says they were so committed that when they couldn't get in through the door, they said, look, we're going to go out our way. We're going up on the roof. Can y'all hear that man of Paul that said, don't drop me. Whatever y'all do, don't drop me. Going up no roof. I've never been on no roof. I, I, I got pausing. Y'all gonna drop me taking me up. And I hear them saying, trust us. If we get you to Jesus, things are gonna change in your life. I got to go home. I hear them saying to him, just trust us to get you to the master. He's in the house. Can't you hear him preaching? That's him preaching right now. He's in the house. Yes, sir. And if you get to him, there's going to be a change in your life. Yes, sir. Have I got a witness? Yes, and so the Bible says that uh, they uh, yes, climbed up on the roof. And you know, my brothers and sisters, it takes boldness to tear somebody else roof down. Do I have a witness? But these men were saying, it's so important that we get into Jesus that uh, if we have to pay to fix somebody else roof, we'll pay for it. But whatever it costs us, we're going to get him to Jesus. I'm going home now, but so often today, we don't help people because we're worrying about how much it's going to cost. Do I have a witness? But do you not know that whenever you help somebody, whatever you give, God is going to make sure that you always have. I ought to have somebody can wave at me that know that you'll never go broke helping somebody else. Yeah, and the, the Bible said that, the, yeah, they begin to rip off the shingles. If that be modern enough and I to give you a picture of what happened, uh, they begin to tear the man the roof up. I can see those in the crowd that standing around now as the grass started falling in the field. All of them started looking up saying, what's going on? Somebody is tearing up the roof. And you know, you know, church, you and I ought to do some things that don't look up. Yes, come. Every now and then, we ought to tap we ought to go through some tough circumstances just to get somebody to Jesus. Have well, I got a witness? And the Bible says, uh, when uh, they had torn up the roof, uh, yes, they let the man down uh, in the presence of Jesus. Do I have a witness? I like what the Bible says because the Bible says uh, in verse number five, uh, and when he saw their faith, I'm gone now. I said, and when he saw their faith, yeah, uh, I come to tell you that we need some faith that God can see. Have I got a witness? God want to see your faith. Have I got a witness? And if you got faith, if God going to see it, then it's got to have some works attached to it. Because the Bible says faith without works is dead. Have I got a witness? See, here's what I'm saying. If you got faith, then God is going to bring you to it ought to be some works. It ought to be some praise. Say, I trust you. If you got faith that God can heal where the sick. 
Where is the lame? Have I got a witness? But the Bible says when he saw their faith, look what he said. Thou sins be forgiven me. Ain't God already what was God doing? The man was sick. But he says your sins. Let me say it again. The man was sick. But Jesus speaks about his sins. Sin is the root of all sickness and disease. But what Jesus was saying, your cause is not your worst problem. Your worst problem is that if you die, you're not going to know me. So I'm going to forgive you for your sins. And if I forgive you for your sins, healing is a benefit. Y'all missed it. I said healing is a benefit. When you be forgiven for your sins. Have I got a witness? That's why. If you get sick, you ought to pray and ask God for healing. Because healing is a benefit. Because you've been saved. Have I got a witness? The Bible says, He told him your sins are forgiven. But when you get to verse 11, He says to him, Arise. Take up your bed and go home. I don't know how you feel about it, but God is able to send the afflicted home another way. In your age, if there ain't anybody here, thank God today because you went to church one way. But you left another way. I wish I had about five people here that was excited just like me. Over your miracle that's about to come. I'm gone now. I told you that you ought to trust God for your miracle. If there ain't anybody here in need of a miracle. You're not ashamed to say, Reverend, it's me. I'm standing in the need of a miracle. If you need a miracle, you ought to claim it today. By faith, you ought to lay hands on your heel. By faith, you ought to lay hands on your breakthrough. By faith, you ought to lay hands on yours, whatever you need, because God is in the business of giving miracles. Have I got a witness? How many here know he's able to dispatch a miracle to your life right now? You ought to. I said what you ought to do. Wow. You ought to. Lift your hands and tell God, send me a miracle. Yes, sir. Send me a miracle. Is there anybody here not a chain to talk to the master? Is there anybody here not a shame to lift your hands and trust him for a breakthrough? If you're not ashamed, just take your mouth 20 seconds and tell him what you need. If it's healing, you ought to ask him for it. You ought to tell him that I'm standing in need of a miracle. Won't he do it? I wish I had some help. Ah! Won't he do it? Anybody know he will? Shout yes, Lord. Y'all ain't up in me. Shout yes, Lord. Won't he do it? Have you tried it? This man went home walking. This man who was paralyzed went home not on the bed, but his bed on him. Walking. 
stay home Say, can't nobody do me like Jesus Can't nobody Brothers and sisters, in times like these, with racism and oppression and many questions unanswered, there is a need for the church. Jesus said, upon this rock I build my church, the very gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Paul says the church of Ephesus, that God should give glory out of the church throughout all ages. We invite you to the church to share with us at Pioneer Missionary Baptist Church, where we are reaching out to save the sinner reaching up to glorify God and reaching in to gather the saints.